literally anyone else anyone else deserves the throne. Hey guys, magandang omaga or magandang gabi, depending on what time you're watching this video. My name is Monica and welcome to my channel. <laughs> so TV series, they can make you laugh, they can make you cry, they can keep you up at night, sometimes they can infiltrate into your personal life. And when these things end, you can often be left feeling what now? You know, that empty feeling inside of you that's like, I've been following this show for however many years and now it's just finished and you don't really know what to do. But what happens when the finale isn't satisfactory? What if it hasn't ended in the way that you expect it to end or how you wanted it to end? So today we're going to be discussing the top five worst finales ever. Okay, so as I was watching this footage back, I realized that I spoke for quite a while for each of my top five. And I didn't really want to cut out a lot of what I was saying because I feel like I really needed to explain why these particular finales made my top five. So what I decided to do instead was turn this into like a five part release. So each video coming out in the next few days will be explaining why each of these finales made my list. First of which being Game of Thrones. So let's get into it. <laughs> the ending was awful. Ever people have been following this show for eight years. It has become part of the culture, basically. It's a conversation starter. Have you watched the most recent episode of Game of Thrones? And it is something that most people that I know have watched. However, if you are not familiar with the show, it's set in olden times, medieval times. There's no electricity, that type of uh, situation. And you are following a number of main characters that are in different areas of this world. One of them is Daenerys Targaryen, who is this long lost princess. Her family was royalty. I don't, I'm not going to get into every single aspect because there is so much plot in this. But the basic premise is there's her. She's trying to get back to the throne. We've got this family, the Stark family, who they're kind of our main protagonists. And you follow them as they get kind of tangled in with like the politics, the royal politics and everything like that. You got some bad guys, you got some good guys, you got some I don't know where you stand type of guys. But the show is so smart and so well written. They're based off of books by George R. R. Martin. He did an amazing job in incorporating all the characters in together, how they would meet, how they would... Uh, there, there are things that are in the first book that are finally answered in the fifth book, but you can see that he has set it up in that way, where kind of like dropping little hints along the way. Very, very smart writing. However, the TV show was overtaking the books and so the last, I think it was season six, seven, and eight, those were not based off of the books because he had not written the books at that point. And lots of people can agree that after season six, the show basically went to crap. <laughs> the writing was nowhere near as clever. It got a little bit more predictable, I would say. But the worst thing about this show was the final season really not just the finale just the entire final season you got some okay so i did, haven't mentioned that there are kind of these on un, this undead army that is beyond the wall so there's this whole politics within you know westeros which is what the kind of their america i would say they're fighting with among themselves but they aren't actually focused on the main enemy which is this undead army that is growing and growing every day but they all think that this is just a myth and it's been building up to that basically who sits on the iron throne but also how they're gonna battle the 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 white walkers right the, the undead army and they finally battle them in one episode one episode please Ugh, it just doesn't make sense this, this this big bad that they've been trying to warn everyone about this entire time and finally they're here and they battle them in one episode and also in an episode that you can barely see because it's like in pitch black i had to draw the curtains turn off all the lights in my in my living room in order to watch this episode and even then you could barely see what was even going on it was such a letdown how am i gonna say this the premise of the final season it feels like they had packed so much into that one season that could actually have gone on for three seasons. So the first bit, the season eight, should have been them fighting the White Walkers. 
And then season nine should have been Daenerys finally reaching power and the battle for that throne going against the, the Lannisters, which are the, the bad that's, you know, in Westeros, really. That should have been an entire season. And then the final season, season 10, should have been uh, Daenerys going mad, gradually going mad, as her family is known to be quite unstable. You see that with her brother, who's quite unstable. Her father was literally called the Mad Tyrant King, if I, if I remember it correctly. Instead of showing the gradual decline in her, in her stability, they just kind of packed it into like three episodes really. It just, it felt so rushed. It didn't feel believable. It felt very out of character for her. They tried to make lots of things happen to her to make it more believable, but it just felt very sloppy. And lots of people will agree on that. And then she just gets killed by Jon Snow. And it's very, it just doesn't feel satisfactory. And then the final, final ending is that who gets to sit on the Iron Throne? Bran. Bran the Broken. A better story? He... So Tyrion Lannister says, who has a better story than Bran the Broken? He wasn't even there for a whole season. Nobody cares about his story. No one cared. Because there are so many different characters in the show and different storylines that are crisscrossing and overlapping all at once, the way that they have to show it is, you know, maybe like 10, 15 minutes on, on a certain group of characters and then they have to split it up, right? So it kind of feels like you're watching more than one show at once, but the way that they do it is very clever. However, when you get to Bran's story where he's kind of journeying beyond the wall, trying to find the three-eyed raven. It's honestly, I don't know many people that have found his part particularly interesting. And then he gets to sit on the throne. Literally anyone else, anyone else deserves the throne. No. Uh, I don't wanna get into it, but also how Cersei dies, stupid as hell, honestly. So she's the big bad in Westeros, as I, as I mentioned before. In the past, the deaths given to really hated antagonists on the on the show have been so satisfactory when Joffrey got killed he was poisoned on his wedding day in his pigeon pie I believe and watching him die this is gonna sound very like sadistic but he was an awful sadistic character himself so when he died it had to be satisfactory and you could just tell he was suffering it was great it was amazing we loved it we loved watching him die <laughs> is that does that make me no everyone agrees okay and then when Ramsay died Terrible, terrible guy. But when he died, it was also satisfactory because he got eaten alive by his own dogs, who he, I think, fed a, new, has fed numerous people to in the past, and then they ate him. And you could just tell it hurt, and it just it made it made me very happy. It was it was obviously a very unpleasant, but it was also very yes, you deserve that. Do you know what I mean? But when Cersei died, it. It's like they gave her a happy ending. The thing is about Cersei, she is an awful person, but you can see where she's coming from. She kind of does it all for the sake of her children. She does it because the only thing that she really ever loved was her children and gradually, you know, they got, they died one by one. And you could tell that she's at the very end of her rope or whatever. She still deserved a magnificent death. And what did they do? They dropped a boulder on her. And she got Jamie back? No! At the end of season seven, you see him break away from her, finally realizing what an awful, awful person she is. And then you think that he's gonna join the Starks. He's kind of there for a while. You think he's gonna be with Brianna Tarth, who I love together, by the way. And then they just kind of pulled the rug out from under us with that. And then he goes back to Cersei. He loves her. He's what he's he's awful as well. I pushed a little boy out of a window for her. I'm awful and and so is she and we belong together or whatever something like that stupid his arc was so good it was such a good story arc that they gave him and then they just ruined it at the very end so annoying so unsatisfactory the anger the frustration is real i'm not even going to touch on Jon snow and how disappointing his character was in season eight honestly because it, he was quite a an important character throughout and you could see how important he was because you find out that he's actually a Targaryen as well and which was like the big thing that they were also leading up to and then what came of it at the end nothing like they just banished him to the wall and then he went off with the wildlings like 
So him being a Targaryen this whole time actually meant nothing. I'm angry at the writers of the show because I know for a fact that George R. R. Martin was not very happy with it. He just, I remember in the interviews, if I can find them, I'll, I'll insert them, but he was basically saying how <laughs> They were asking him about the show and how, if he was happy with it or whatever, he would change anything or something like that. And he was like, I'm just going to focus on the prequels and the other shows. I'm very excited about those. We could have gone to 11, 12, 13 seasons. You know, if you've read the, my novels, you, you know there was enough material for, for more seasons. Uh, they made certain cuts, but that's fine. We have five other shows. Five prequels in development. Committed to these prequels. You could tell he was not happy with how it went down. They basically destroyed the entire franchise, the entire world that he created, and they just they ruined it. They, they ruined it. <laughs> so that is why the finale of Game of Thrones is probably one of the worst finales of all time. <laughs> I would also love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you think that Game of Thrones should have made my top five list? And if not, then what do you think should be in this list instead of this? I would love to hear your thoughts, so leave them in the comment section down below. Stay tuned for my next video where I'll be discussing the next worst finale on my list. If you wanted to see more of me, my socials are linked down below and are also on my end screen. I'm also offering my video editing services for anyone who is interested i have my fiverr freelance account linked down below and thank you guys for watching if you stayed until this point and i will see you guys next time bye guys <laughs>